Now, here's a statistic that will blow your mind. According to the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, approximately 80% of people with drug-resistant high blood pressure have obstructive sleep apnea and most don't even know it. And this is not a coincidence. In the next few minutes, I'll show you exactly how your sleep could be sabotaging your blood pressure, the warning signs that most people ignore. And here's the good news how fixing your sleep could be the key to finally getting your blood pressure under control. So if you or someone you love snores loudly, feels exhausted even after a full night's sleep, or has been told that their blood pressure is just something they'll have to live with, stick around because I guarantee you, you may learn a thing or two that can be very helpful. So what exactly is sleep apnea? Well, let me break it down in very simple terms. Sleep apnea is a condition where your breathing repeatedly stops and starts while you sleep. Now, I'm not talking about just holding your breath for just a few seconds. I'm talking about your airway completely collapsing, cutting off oxygen to your brain and body for 10 seconds or longer. The most common type is called obstructive sleep apnea. Now, here's what happens. When you fall asleep, the muscles in your throat relax. For most people, this isn't a big deal, it's not a problem. But if you have sleep apnea, these relaxed muscles allow your airway to narrow or collapse completely. You know, it's like a guiding hose that you, that gets pinched shut. Now, you can, you can think of it this way. Imagine someone repeatedly covering your nose and mouth while you're trying to sleep. Every time your oxygen drops, your brain panics and jolts you awake just enough uh, to gasp for air and restart your breathing. You might not even remember waking up, but your body is fighting for oxygen all night long. And, and here's the scary part. This can happen anywhere from five times per hour in mild cases to over 100 times per hour in severe cases. That means that some people are literally suffocating themselves dozens of times every single night. Your brain and heart are working overtime, your blood oxygen levels are plummeting, and your body is in constant stress mode even while you think you're peacefully sleeping. Every time you stop breathing during a, a sleep apnea episode, your body goes into full emergency mode. Your oxygen levels crash. Your brain essentially hits the panic button. It floods your system with stress hormones like adrenaline, telling your heart to pump harder and faster to get whatever oxygen is available to your vital organs. At the same time, your blood vessels clamp down and constrict, trying to maintain blood pressure to your brain. But here's what makes it even so dangerous. It doesn't just affect you while you're sleeping. This nightly assault on your cardiovascular system creates lasting damage that carries over into your daytime hours. The repeated oxygen drops triggers chronic inflammation throughout your body. Your sympathetic nervous system, that's your, your fight or flight response, becomes hyperactive and stays that way even when you're awake. Your blood vessels over time lose the ability to relax properly and the constant stress damages the delicate linings of your arteries. Your kidneys also get involved, releasing hormones that tell your body to hold on to more salt and water, which drives your blood pressure even higher. And because your sleep is constantly interrupted, your body never gets the chance to reset and repair itself properly. The result? A vicious cycle where your sleep apnea raises your blood pressure and your high blood pressure makes your sleep apnea worse, creating a downward spiral that puts your heart and brain at serious risk. So I guess the million dollar question is, how do you know if sleep apnea might be behind your blood pressure problems? Well, let me walk you through um, the warning signs that most people ignore, but shouldn't. Let's start with what happens at night. Now, the biggest red flag is loud chronic snoring, especially if it's accompanied by gasping, choking, or snorting sounds. But here's the thing. Not everyone with sleep apnea snores loudly, and not everyone who snores has sleep apnea. The real telltale sign is if your partner has ever witnessed you actually stop breathing during sleep, even if it's just for a few seconds. If someone has told you that you hold your breath or make gasping sounds while sleeping, that's a major warning sign. Other nighttime clues include waking up frequently to urinate, uh, breaking out in night sweats, even when your room isn't hot, or having restless, 
tossing and turning sleep where you wake up with your sheets completely twisted. That's definitely a telltale sign. But the daytime symptoms might even be more important to recognize. Do you wake up with headaches, especially in the morning? That's your brain telling you that it did not get enough oxygen overnight. Are you exhausted even after what should have been a, a full night's sleep? Do you find yourself nodding off during the quiet activities like watching TV, you know, reading or sitting in meetings? This isn't just being tired. This is your body desperately trying to recover from a night of oxygen deprivation. You might also notice problems with concentration, memory issues, or mood changes like increased irritability or even depression. Your brain fog isn't just stress, it could also be sleep apnea. Now here are the combinations that should really get your attention. If you have high blood pressure, that's hard to control, despite taking multiple medications, especially if you're also overweight, you're male, you're over 40, or have a thick neck, Sleep apnea should be high on your list of suspects. Now, women, don't think you are off the hook, especially after menopause. Your risk increases significantly, and if you have a family history of sleep apnea, your chances are even higher. The bottom line is this. If you're dealing with unexplained high blood pressure plus any of, the, of these sleep or daytime symptoms, it's time to have a conversation with your doctor about getting tested. And here's the really encouraging news. Treating sleep apnea can make a dramatic difference in your blood pressure, often within just a few weeks. The gold standard treatment is something called the CPAP therapy, which stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. Now, I know it sounds intimidating, but it's actually pretty straightforward. You wear a mask over your nose or mouth that's connected to a machine that gently blows air into your airway all night long. Think of it like having a gentle breeze, keeping your airway propped open, preventing those dangerous collapses that triggers all the cardiovascular chaos that we talked about. Now, studies show consistently that people who use CPAP regularly can see their blood pressure drop by 5 to 10 points and sometimes even more. The key word here though is regularly. You need to use it every night for at least six hours to get the full benefits. I mean, I won't lie to you, it takes some getting used to, but most people adapt within a few weeks and the improvement in how they feel is usually dramatic. Now, not to worry, CPAP isn't your only uh, option. For people with mild to moderate sleep apnea, custom oral appliances can work really well. You know, these are like specialized mouth guards that hold your jaw and tongue in position that keeps your airway open. They, they are much more like uh, they are much more portable and easier to travel with uh, than with CPAP machines. Weight loss is another powerful tool. Even losing just about 10% of your body weight can significantly reduce the severity of sleep apnea and the blood pressure benefits often follow. This is especially important because excess weight around the neck puts extra pressure on your airway. For some people also, positional therapy can help. Now that's simply avoiding sleeping on your back, where gravity makes the airway collapse more likely. There are special pillows and devices that can help train you to sleep on your side. And surgery is also an option for certain cases, particularly where there are specific anatomical issues like an enlarged tonsils or a severely deviated septum. But here's what's really exciting. The benefits go way beyond just blood pressure. When you treat sleep apnea effectively, people often find that they can reduce their blood pressure medications, of course, under their doctor's supervision. Uh, they sleep better, they have more energy during the day, they think more clearly, and their mood improves dramatically. I must put a note in here that early intervention is crucial. The longer sleep apnea goes untreated, the more damage accumulates. But the earlier you catch it and treat it, the better your chances of preventing serious complications and actually reversing some of the damage that has already been done. Now, if this video has helped you understand the connection between sleep apnea and high blood pressure, please give it a thumbs up, share with somebody else who may find it beneficial. And thank you for staying through. Stay blessed and I'll catch you on the next video.